light and heavy letters. So the majority of the Arabic letters are what we call light letters. And that means that when they're pronounced, the back of the tongue is not raised. And we mean um, when we come to look at the heavy letters, we'll see that the tongue is really lifted up at the back of the mouth. So light letters essentially are the ones where the back of the tongue is not purposely raised. Now the sound of the light letters with the fat ha is the a as in the word cat. So let's take some examples. So these letters here are classed as the light letters and they've got the fat ha. So we've got the ba, the ta, the fa, the na and the la. Okay, so ba, ta, fa, na, la. All have got this a ah sound. And this is with the fatha, the light letters, which are the majority of the Arabic letters, have the a ah sound. Now the heavy letters. Now there are seven letters which are classed as the heavy letters. And in essence, what happens is whenever you pronounce these letters, there's a uh, raising of the back of the tongue and the tongue is actually raised with these heavy letters with any vowel they have however you see a significant change in the way the fatter is pronounced on these heavy letters and they give a R sound and in English, the closest thing you would get to it is the word art. So we'll just have a look at these. So first, this is a list of the actual letters which are classed as heavy letters. So we have the sad, the dad, the ta, the dha, the kha, the qaf, and the ghain. Okay, now we've put here a set of Arabic letters and we've essentially for most of the heavy letters we've paired up the counterpart in the light letters and let's take an example here at the beginning here we've got the sa and the next one is the sad which with the fatha will be pronounced as sa and the reason we put the sa and the sa together is to emphasize the difference and these are letters that people must differentiate um, and a common mistake is if people don't understand the heaviness and the lightness they will pronounce the sa the same as the sa which is not right so we're just going to go through uh, the letters you see at the end the ha and the rain have not got counterparts so let's start at the beginning of the line we've got the sa and the sa We've got the da and the da. We've got the ta and the ta. We've got the da and the da. We've got the ka and the qa. We've got the kha and then last of all we've got ra. So the heavy letters, if you were to say them slowly by yourself, you will see that the tongue is raised at the back of the mouth. And essentially, the difference is in the air pressure. When you say sa, i.e. any of the light letters, the air actually will exit through the front of your mouth. So the direction of the air is um, horizontally to the front of your mouth. So if you just try and say sa, da, ta, da, ka, the sound is going forward. Now when you say the sa, the da, the ta, the dha, the qa, the kha, and the ra, you will notice that because you're raising your tongue, the air pressure is actually going up towards the top of your mouth. Okay, so there's some pressure build up of the air and it's going upwards. So try saying sa, sa. You'll notice that very little air will go forward through the front of your mouth. And this is essentially the difference. It's the pressure 
there's pressure on the heavy letters and the air is being forced towards the top so it's going vertically up inside of your mouth now what we'll do we'll look at some uh, samples of the heavy letters just to reinforce the actual pronunciation so the first one we've got here is Salatihim Salatihim then we have Arda now when we cover the Maharij of each letter and when you do this with your Tajweed teacher they will train you to pronounce these properly here we're just um, giving a very brief example of the heavy letters so the next one is Ta'ami Ta'ami then we have Vanna Vanna next one we have is Khannas Khannas then we have Uqad Uqad. Then we have Rasaqa. Rasaqa. So the main thing to take away from this is they are not the same as the heavy letters. Uh, sorry, the light letters. The light letters have a a ah sound. All of the heavy letters have a sound which is closer to the a ah sound in English. And again, this is only learned properly with training with a teacher. Um, and just a note here is try not to make the letters too heavy. So if we take the sa, don't change it into a sa. So it's more an a sound than an a sound. Okay, so a note here as well on other heavy letters. So the ra and the lam are only heavy under circum certain circumstances okay so these two letters the ra and the lam they're sometimes light and they're sometimes heavy now the the letter ra is actually a very difficult letter to master it has about 15 rules which have to be learned and those rules determine whether the ra is um, light or heavy and the pronunciation of the heavy ra and the light ra is not easy so we're going to have a complete lesson dedicated to explaining this and again this is something that is mastered with a teacher now the lamb is heavy only when it is used in the name of Allah and there are rules here so essentially all you have to remember is that with the name of Allah when the name of Allah is preceded by a letter which carries either a fatha or a dhamma then the lamb of Allah goes heavy so let's look at some examples here so the first one here we have bismillahi okay so we have the Allah preceded by a kasra on the meme so in this case we say millahi so the lamb is la remember la is light is the a sound so again it's bismillahi la now in the next two cases the name of Allah is preceded by a fatha and a dhamma so it's Hu Allah Hu La So again it's the R sound, this is the heavy sound. And then in the last one we've got Lullahi Lullahi Again it's that R sound, the heavy sound. So it's a simple um rule, but it's a basic mistake that many people make in their recitation. Now we're going to talk about something called skilled transitioning so we've got a rule here a light letter is never affected by a heavy letter and vice versa a skilled reciter is trained to make transition from light to heavy letters and vice versa without breaking this rule so what we're saying here let's take some examples a common mistake with people who are not trained with a teacher ta teacher properly is 
when there are combinations of light letters and heavy letters together they change the um, sound especially of the light letters so the light letters suddenly become a bit too heavy and this is something that is picked up by a trained teacher and it's something that you will get used to once you've been uh, your mistakes have been picked out so we'll take a few examples here so the first one we've got sudurinas okay now the mistake that people make is they will say sudu so they say su which is the back of the tongue is raised and then when they come into the dal they keep the tongue raised so they make the dal heavy so you have to quickly change the and transition to a light letter so it's sudu so you've got so the dal is du you don't make it bu okay so sudurinas take another example ida waqab now the ba is um, an echo letter here so we're doing the qalqala but to know at the end we've got heavy letter and a light letter so again the mistake is some people will say waqab waqab and the ba is made heavy here ba waqab and it should be waqaba ba waqaba waqaba okay so ida waqaba so a slight difference there but a trained teacher will pick this up we have the same sort of example in the next one it's fil uqad so you've got to make sure that when you do the dal you you bring the makhraj the point of articulation back to the proper point of articulation of the dal and the tongue is not raised the next one is probably more clear we've got sayasla so the ya is light now what people will do as a mistake is they affect the ya with the the sound of the sad so they say sayas and they make the hev the ya heavy so instead of saying ya they go straight into ya so we have to keep the ya as the ya and then quickly transition into the sad so it's sayasla okay sayasla now the last one if we take just the last word on its own it's khalaqa okay so we've got a heavy a light and then a heavy letter now a mistake people will make they'll say khalaqa so they make the lamb heavy instead of saying la they say la it should be khalaqa and this is where the training of the jaws takes place and also the training of the ear to be able to hear these very slight differences but again this is tajweed this is learning tajweed properly and when you sit with a trained teacher they will check every single word and every letter is proper you cannot add heaviness to a light letter okay so the next topic is the light and the heavy alif so the long vowel alif is light if preceded by a light letter and heavy if preceded by a heavy letter so what do we mean by that we'll explain in a minute but the other point is the alif is sep a separate sound to the sound being lengthened and again we'll explain this so let's take the first example here we've got the the noon and the alif so it's double length this is our original mad however the noon is light so the alif which is its own separate sound here although it's normally explained that we say na which is too long it's actually the na which is the noon with the fatta plus the sound of the alif and because the noon is light it has a a sound the alif also has a a sound so it will be na okay now we'll look at the next two and you notice these are both to do with the qaf so I'm going to read the first line okay so it's narullahil muqadah okay so listen to the sound of the qaf muqadah so the qa is qadah so it's heavy but it's still qadah now the second one same 
قاف از القاريه القاريه now it has the qa now between the two you've got muqada and alqari so the second one sounds a bit heavier qa where's the first ones muqada now it's not actually the uh, the qaf is not changing the qaf is actually the same it's the alif in the second one is a, a R sound because the alif itself has now become heavy because of the preceding heavy letter and that's why it sounds slightly heavier but it's the alif itself which has become heavier okay so again I'll just read those again Narullahil Muqadah al Qari'ah okay so very subtle point there is the alif itself is heavy or light and it's a separate sound to the letter that precedes it now just to emphasize that the alif is separate this line here which is Rabbil Alameen Rabbil Alameen okay now the Ain has the sound of A and then we have the alif so what can happen is if you say you just double the length of the ain so the ain is ha ah, you'll go ah okay but the actual sound is ha ah. okay so you have to say the ain and then very quickly release to give the a ah sound of the alif so they're two separate sounds so you have to release remember the ain is is done by squeezing the muscles um, in the throat alongside the windpipe and you have to release them very quickly to get the alif in as an alif without squeezing it so it's Rabbil Alameen and again a skilled Tajweed teacher will recognize if you hold the ain too long and you keep the the throat constricted too long because then you're not saying the alif, you're just doubling the sound of the the ayn itself. Okay, and that's really an introduction to the heavy letters.